So let me just, um, a few opening paragraphs of explanation and then, um, there's actually I think three questions in here, but I'll try to frame it right. Um, and then we're gonna start with Mr. Honorado. Um, since 1990, inflation has caused the prices of basic necessities such as housing, food, clothing, and transportation to increase dramatically. And we are currently in the midst of an economic recession which has hit Pennsylvania families hard. However, grant levels for families needing cash assistance have not increased in 20 years, since January 1, 1990. A family of three receiving cash assistance will receive the same amount today as they would have 20 years ago, a monthly average of $403 throughout the Commonwealth. <laughs> For the record, that is 74% below the 2000, um, 2010 federal poverty guidelines. Questions. Should it, shouldn't any economic recovery program incorporate an increase in assistance to the poorest Pennsylvanians and provide for annual cost of living increases for those receiving cash assistance? And if you are elected governor, will you include a meaningful cash assistance grant increase in your first proposed state budget? And then finally, what other steps do you plan to take as government, governor to ensure that these families do not slip deeper into poverty? Well, the first thing uh, that I will do, because I, I do believe the next governor is going to face a very difficult first bite process, considering where the economy is and the revenue is coming in. Uh, but as I stated earlier, it's about priorities. And the first thing uh, that I, I will commit to and that I will make very clear is that you don't start with the safety net program. If, you, if there's ever a time when you need the safety net program, it's in the bad economic times, more than the good economic times. It would be the worst possible time to start cutting those programs. As it relates to a cost of living adjustment or increase, obviously that would depend on where the financial condition of the state is, but you at least start by not cutting it, and then you also set some parameters that if any increase, cost of living increase in any area of government is going to be considered, you start here first. That's when you start setting the priorities. And we're going to make sure that we help the people that need this. That's why I'm a big supporter of the Earned Income Tax Credit, too. It is something we can do right away. It benefits the low-income worker. It allows you to keep more of your uh, wages as you work. And there's not a disincentive to make more. You get to keep it. If we have the right policies, even in tough economic times, we can allow uh, the people at the lower end of the economic uh, ladder they have a much better shot at moving up. And it's these types of public policies that I'm going to be pushing. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this whole debate, if there's a budget fight again, I will make it clear I will not use the Department of Human Service as a tool to leverage votes. They will be funded. All right. Um, Mr. Wagner? Uh, as everyone knows, many of these programs are funded by the state government, the federal government. Cash assistance, medical assistance, special allowance program, uh, the LIHE program, the weatherization assistance program. They're all vitally important programs in state government, first and foremost to serve those in need. So we have to be extremely sensitive to make sure that they are properly funded uh, and that they properly operate. Uh, and I can tell you sitting here today, I do not have confidence that they are properly operating. But this program, is a program that certainly needs more attention than most programs in state government. But we have audited some of these programs, not this program in particular, but we have found error rates of these programs and the beneficiaries of the error rates are generally insurance companies and not the recipients. So yes, as Dan indicated, we are facing a serious budget crisis going forward this year, next year, and the following year. And again, I said this earlier, the, the first charge of the next governor is to make sure that this government, this train gets back on track. And as I can sit here today and tell you, many of these programs are not on track. And these programs are vitally important to those who are most in need. And as governor, I'll make sure that they're working and they're working well, and hopefully be able to increase the subsidy to this program that hasn't received one in 20 years. Obviously, someone who's in this uh, situation is probably in some type of subsidized housing. Scranton and oversee almost 7,000 units. And in that time period that we're talking about, the 20 years, 
those units and landlords have seen increases. People who are in this program deserve an increase. It's very simple because everything else has gone up. Think about it. If you're a family of three, your food bill has gone up, clothing has gone up. It's the least we do. We know that there are tremendous financial challenges ahead of us, but I think it's the least we do just to give them a start. Uh, I certainly agree that uh, these uh, are fundamentally important programs, and it's fundamentally unfair if we allow the purchasing power of general assistance, for example, to, to shrink because um, of the obvious rise in costs without any rise in, uh, in assistance. So that has to change, and I commit myself to it and finding the money to make that happen, to treat people fairly. Um, we are seeing cuts in the budget this year that I oppose. Uh, the uh, very modest uh, state supplemental grant uh, that is added to the federal SSI, Supplemental Security Income, that very modest state grant was cut about 25% in this year's state budget. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, I wrote to uh, DPW today, they're about to implement the regulation without public hearings. So I wrote to them today opposing the cut and saying at least you have to have public hearings and let people know what's going on. It, it's only a few dollars per recipient, the supplemental grant, but it can make all the difference uh, if, if, they're, if they're living on Social Security income and, and uh, are, are just up against it. So government's got to respond. We can't start a program and then not have the guts to fund it properly. Um, we have to step up and say, no, we won't cut uh, these programs when they're so vitally needed. And we have to find the money, uh, find the will, and provide the leadership to bring the legislature along and get the votes needed to treat people properly.